Aloha no kako, a ovao o Joshua, la nakila o kainai kapono mengwau. Mai kamoku o hamakua, mai ahu aloa mai au. O mauna awake ako umauna, o waipi o ko ua baba. Um, it is an honor to be able to come and share with you all. I have been, um, again, born and raised in Honoka'a and, and, and growing up in the forest of Ahualoa. I have been a lifelong uh, student of um, Ike Hawaii. I'm a graduate of Kano Ka'aina, Hawaiian Public Charter School, and I have been a, uh, a teacher since 2005 in the Hawaii Department of Education, uh, at first with the Ike Hawaii Kupuna Makua program. I taught in the DOE, continue to teach in DOE in, in multiple capacities. Um, I am the founder and director of Ho'a, which, which originally was known as the Hawaiian Cultural Center of Hamakua. Um, and we, uh, we've expanded our services um, across North Hawaii and, and continue to share Ike Hawaii as well as land stewardship um, projects. Um, I am a student of Hula as well, the grounding of my cultural foundations in the traditions of Oli and Hula. Uh, my Kumu, um, I have several Kumus from when I was young, Atipua Case from Waimea, uh, Kumu Kuwalu Anakalea from Waimea, um, and then also Taupori Tangaro and Kikuni Kanahele. In the year in 2020, I unikied as a Kumu Hula, um, and now I am the Kumu of Halau or Kuau. Aloha. O ahi mai e lono e, o ahi o luna, o ahi o lalo, o ahi o ga, o ahi o gai. O ahi mai e lono e, lono, lono nui akia, lono i ka makahiki, e i ka noka wā o ka makahiki no, o lono. So this season, this time, as I was from when I was very young, the, my first introduction to this concept of makahiki was the uakuloloku. This was a time of the great rains, the great storms, the big winds, the big surf, all this energetic movement and shifting of our environment. You know the the hula leao kaaina. This is actually when the the land really begins to dance and move, and even oh. Befitting that it is known as uh, no, this is the time of the of the great earth shakes and but it's, it's it wasn't a fear factor it was a matter of like woo the, the, the Aina is active right now everything is open open like this chant speaks of oh wahi to crack open break it open everything's opening up getting ready to receive and receive from this returning energy this returning archetype this returning akua known as lono uh, lono is uh, in mo'olelo was said to be uh, the Akua of Oihana Mahi Ai. He was uh, the, the, Aka, the Akua of the, of the farmer, the uh, Akua of fertility, uh, the Akua of, uh, of peace at the time, as we commonly learn. Uh, Lono comes in the images of these great billowing clouds uh, and, 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 and great winds and such. And again, the thundering. Yeah, the, the Lono is also known, Lono is also known as the god of sound. The resonation. So that's why he always, when he comes on in, he comes in with the thunder crack, with the pounding surf. It's just action when Lono shows up. Um, common learning of uh, that I remember as a kid is that during the time of Makahiki, during this season, um, there was a number of things that marked the arrival of the season. One was kind of in the month of Ikuwa, and we get the beginning of the storm seasons. And then also the um, kind of marking and a celestial alignment, the arrival of the Makali or the Pleiades constellation. Um, in our in our skies uh, for the whole duration of the night. Um, so one marker that that began this season was when the Makali'i was was observed rising on the eastern uh, horizon at sunset. So that particular alignment kind of marked the beginning of this season. Well, well somewhat actually the 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 second Kuapola, the Kuapola ceremonies kind of marked the distinct points. So the first Kuapola I was actually just observed last week uh, when the rising of the of the, the last uh, Lono moon. Um, after the month of Ikuwa, um, and it's it's a it's an exciting time really because it's a time of reflection, it's a time of recognition. So when we were growing up, it was always a time to like you know it's time to kind of flaunt the feathers a little bit in so many different ways um, for our productivity during the time of Kau, our productivity um, during the summer months with the long days. You know, there's a lot of time to be cultivating, working, exercising, right? whatever whatever that is. Um, I remember uh, growing up 
when I was attending school at Kanoka Aina, it was a time too that we, we really looked at and we learned about um, what are some of the practices that our kupuna would observe, such as um, the the ka'apuni of the, ali, the, the traversing around the island by the high chiefs and what they were doing. And there's different mana'o that you find here and there, but we were taught to how in this procession of the ali'i, it was their time to assess. And they would assess the productivity of all the different ahupua'a. Yeah? And so ahupua'a, as we know, is a land division. It was actually literally marked by an actual ahu with the head, a carving of the head of a pua'a um, that was along the alaka'aka'i, the, 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 the island trail. And that's where the people would gather and bring their finest of whatever their trait was. If you were a farmer, you brought the best of your crop. If you were a, a, a lay maker, you brought your best lay. If you were um, a carver, you brought your best carving. Whatever your 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 trait was, you'd expo you would exp uh, display this, um, including down to to kind of ho'ike or to present your fastest runner, your, your strongest person. Your highest jumper you know it was a it was a kind of a way that people would expo um you know what they have done with what was given with them to them if the akua grant us all this life grant us all these elements all these things to help restore or to to keep us alive and give and give us what we need to be productive what have we done with it or the assessment um, and so this was um very much uh ho'ike or, or brought forth um in, a, in these times of celebration, celebratory things. Uh, Kanaka, in, the, in you read some of the old writings, everyone wore their finest. This was the bougie event. Everyone wore the best, so the best showing off the, all this beautiful art and all this kappa and all this jewelry and all these things and showing and shining what they got from their moku, from their areas. Um, and a lot of times these festivals, these celebrations, these luau would also be um, presided over uh, by the Akua um, Makawahine. Uh, Makawahine was actually a female Akua that actually presided over the games, the famous Makahiki games. Um, as it was ne not necessarily that all of these sports were only reserved for Makahiki season, there's actually only one sport that's actually dedicated to Makahiki. The rest of them were just sports, and it's just this was a highlighted time for people to come together and, and eat and feast and dance and challenge each other. Um, in, in, in good sport so it really was a time to acknowledge all the the the, the wealth the creativity um, and again the productivity of our aina um, and of course this aligns with many different religious practices that would take place at the time uh, you would have um, a shifting over of the political structure uh, it's important to note how in the days of our kupuna um, politics and religion were intertwined. Spiritual concepts of Aina and, and the Akua were part of, of guiding the, the, the political structure um, and of our communities. And so during this time of Makahiki, there was a changeover. The primary Akua for most of the season overseeing the political realm is known as Ku. And there's many different forms of Ku, Ku Nui Akea, um, and which Ku really upholds the couples. Yeah, the mandates, uh, the sacred mandates that help to govern human relations and or human relation with Aina uh, and maintaining it and uh, re resources. Um, and then during this time of Makahiki, you had a little bit of a time of changeover in which Ku took his time to rest. And so all the ki'is, all the images of Ku were taken down from the heiau. And so that's kind of what, what uh, in, in timeline, so that just last week with the Kuapola, this is what would, would be happening right now. At this time, now that the kahuna kuhi kuhi is, uh, or the kahuna to observe these things, these celestial alignments and such, make the call, hey, you know, this is the taba of makahiki. Now all this changeover begins, this time of the change. So the images of the ku would come down, a lot of things, with things would begin to be put away for the season, and the images of lono are, are going to start to come out. The heiaus would shift. And in this time, there's a little bit of, there's a, there's a shift in the political structure, a shift in the kapu, um, as at the end of the summertime, we have been more reserved in maintaining our resources. Now they're kind of plentiful. So there's a little bit more of an open time uh, to gather. Um, it is a harvesting time. Um, uh, and, and in this changeover of the lono, it's also a time of recognition, of reflection again, too. Uh, 
So amazing how our kupuna uh, timed this, you know, this shift with our natural seasons in, you know, recognizing how important that is in the shift of the, of the kanaka and in the understanding that we as people, you know, to sustain our communities, there's a lot of hard work that has to take place. But we, in order for that hard work to be one appreciative and um, to malama the body and malama the people who do the work, we also need this time of rest. So it's very recognized that a lot of the the little bit more demand and or um, call for work and the harder work things the building of, of temples or the building of homes the, the the big agricultural practice and stuff all that kind of it's time to rest now you don't really do that work one on some practical reasons the days are going to get short we're moving into the winter months so the sun is not up as much uh, we are more rain during this time um, so it's not the best time for planting because your starts aren't getting a full sun. It's not a good time to try and plan a big work job because uh, it's probably going to be raining a lot of the time. Um, and and yeah, and also it's very important that we recognize that the, the Kanaka, the community, the family, the, the individuals give us our time to rest. This is our holiday. Um, and in that too, the Aina, the land gets to rest. It's in its time to restore. In order to progress again into the new year, we reflect, we give thanks for what we've achieved, we recognize things and uh, challenges that we have to face or that we want to improve on. And we we feed this Kino, we feed the mind, the body, the spirit, just as the season brings the big rains to refill the aquifers, to the big winds that kind of blow across and trim down the weak branches of the trees and um, and just penetrates our, our Aina with Vai and cleans out the rivers and shakes things up and gets everything stimulated again and, and refreshed uh, in preparations for a new year to come. So, yeah, hey, no kawao, kawakahiki. If we relook at, um, let's see where, where Makahiki was brought back into our schools again. Um, and, and yeah, and for a lot of us, our first introduction to Makahiki, uh, predominantly if we grew up in Hawaii in, in grade school, is Makahiki Games, Makahiki Games. To the point that nowadays, that's almost all that's associated. Right off the bat, people think Makahiki and they think games, sports. That also has to do because of colonization and you know American um, addiction to sports. That influence has come in, um, but also, you know, acknowledging from coming out of the, the Hawaiian Renaissance and when language was being able to come back into the school, when Hawaiian culture had you know some allowance back into the school, we're still facing a very colonized mindset, and so there was a, there still was a lot of fear, uh, and not to mention also you know because of religion and. and Christian dominance and such too, there's still a lot of fear factor based on, on anything, especially uh, coming back culturally. Um, uh, and so the, the safest component that could be brought into the schools was Makahiki was a time of peace. Makahiki was celebratory time and celebrated with games and feasts. Yeah, that's what we brought, that what was taught for elementary school students. Um, unfortunately, we it kind of almost changed the whole history of Makahiki, the whole actual history behind it. And that's become a dominating mindset um, because there was a fear to expand beyond that. I was fortunate um, that, you know, getting to go to Kanoka Aina, a Hawaiian-based charter school, that we got to open up to another level of that. But for the majority of our communities, that might be about almost the end of all that you're going to hear of Makahiki. When there's so much more, uh, I really like to remind everyone that Makahiki games out of all of what Makaiki game is, the sporting event, the sport, it's like this much of what Makaiki is. It's a tiny fragment. Yeah, um, it was it was a great. It's a big thing too. It was the big active fun part. So of course that sticks in the mind. So just an understanding too what that is, and and where we start to see communities hosting events. That's very traditional. There was a time where now because part of the celebrations this time, yeah, the villages all around they have their celebrations, and there was a time because there was these festivals uh, and sporting times that took place. People would kaapuni and go around, you know, because um, I was to say too, you know, it's also big gambling time. So everybody was going around, and you know, it was a little bit more time to traverse and go huakai, go visit the neighboring things. And of course, for athletes, it was a time to go and challenge the neighbors next next door and such too. So it definitely has its place. Um, but it wasn't the pinnacle of what it was. It really was about this time of reflecting back and, and, and connecting 
uh, with the ancestors. So I think the easiest way to kind of explain this is to actually see the parallels, the parallels that we also observe in many of the other holidays that are more widely known today. And when you actually look at the true origins of many of these holidays around the same time of year, we find that there's there's more parallels than anything. So very similar. So what else in, in the span of Makahiki season, Oilo time is, you know, like right now, like around um, October to around February, early March-ish. What do we have during that time in, in our in day and age today? Is, well, there's Halloween, there's Thanksgiving, there's Christmas, there's New Year's. So if we actually look back into that too, since those are a little more commonly known in our minds, if we look back to it, 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 these the origins of even these holidays go back to indigenous roots. And so this is where it's a, it's a beautiful thing that, you know, as indigenous peoples all around the world, we moved with our season. It was recognized during this time of year when the, for all of us, especially right now in the northern hemisphere, which is also the origins of a lot of these holidays, we're all northern hemisphere people. This is the time where the days got dark. This is the time where the days got short. This is the time where things got wetter or snow even and such. Um, and we recognize the shift that takes place. Um, Halloween, the origins of Halloween going all the way back to ancient Celtic and, uh, and actually the tradition of Samhain, um, it was a time of reflection, a time of acknowledging the ancestor. Yeah. And now we got to get through all the, the West or the, the Americanized capitalism. Now we just see monsters and ghouls. It was actually it was actually the, the, the time of recognizing the change, the shifting of the season. Um, very much more noticeable in, in continental areas such as that when you're seeing all the trees changing color and all the animals migrating, disappearing. There was big shifts that took place in our environment. Here in Hawaii, yeah, we're seeing the shift. The weather is going to start coming from the south now. We're going to start seeing the kohola, the whales are coming in. You know, our environment is shifting. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> So there was a recognition of that. And in that transition period, um, my parallel I draw is that you now these places, you know, so much is transitioning in almost like a death is happening. And when you, the leaves are dying, the animals disappearing, the veil between the worlds become thin. And so it was an easy time to commune with the ancestral world. Yeah. For us, the Kanaloa, the great whales are returning. They are like the manifestation of, of going down into the subconscious and going down into the realm of pole. It's a time to go into that, to reflect deep within oneself. Um, and that's where our kupuna are. So it was a time of recognizing, rec recognition, reflection back. Um, there is one practice that was observed by our people too. It was a time to actually make offerings to the months that we have just come from, to honor the time, to literally make an offering back to everything that happened in the past years. Okay? Sawin traditions, you made offerings to the ancestors. You know? So there's parallels that we can find. And I think I, I, I do like to share about that because many of us, we are mixed. I myself, I, it's a big one for me because I'm also Irish. So, hey, I see my ancestors actually, you know, parallel, different environments. So a little different, but same kind, a, a, a similar thread. You move into the time of Thanksgiving. Okay. Now, yeah, we have the historical understanding of like the American Thanksgiving, Thanksgiving. Yeah. Um, but the or, but really that time of year, you know, before the pilgrims, you know, the native peoples, um, it was a time where, um, it's the harvest. We celebrate the harvest. Same here. We're coming out of the end of the summer time. We have a lot of food that has grown during this time. We've been able to produce. And now we, it is also the practicality. It was a time to kind of, it was time to feast because you're not going to have much more to harvest right away, but you also have a lot of storage. Eat it. <laughs> you're not going to waste them. And, and certain things came plentiful. You know, everybody talks about, or a common thing in a typical uh, American concept of Thanksgiving, everybody eat turkey. Everybody like eat turkey. Why, why is the turkey so such a thing? Because literally in on, on the continental U.S. in this particular origins where this holiday was recognized, turkey is come plentiful during this time. In Hawaii, it was the pua. Yeah. During this time, we all got to see because we go see them dead on the road, unfortunately. We got choke pigs running around. This is kind of at the end of the summer. Those young little piglets, they nice it and they're everywhere right now. So it was plentiful. So certain things become very plentiful. It also shows the recognition of the diet. Yeah. And the land is now producing something else that, that it's abundant for us and kind of being an important species. You know, we kind of play a predator role to keep, make sure that numbers don't explode on a particular species. Sorry, getting a little too science there. But um, yeah, so there's a, there's a recognition and we, we give thanks. It's not only to the food but to the land that provided the resources for that and give thanks to us, to the hands that worked, give thanks to, to, to the Akua for bringing it, give thanks to our leaders for, for supporting, give thanks to um, all these things because we've recognized where we came from, we acknowledge these things, we give thanks for where we are right here and now. 
um, and for what we have the abundance it's uh, presenting to us um, and then if you look at the parallel now let's look at if we look at Christmas okay there's a lot of historical things with Christmas when we look at it now I always challenge everybody like okay it's, it's a lot of the recognition of Christmas has now been given to uh, to the Christian God beautiful my Kai with all you know born in Bethlehem in the middle of a desert and we go pine trees and you know or you know Christmas and snow all over the place how is that <laughs> there's a mixture of culture happening in that but if you look at the root of it the concept of what's also being recognized is looking forward looking ahead because um, about this time now we're recognizing this is um, the Christmas time is kind of really associated near the Kealapolo Hiva Akanaloa. It's, it's, at, it's, it's right around the time of the winter solstice. So we are now entering to the darkest, longest day. But now we're transitioning. So it's a look ahead that we're transitioning now to look toward the return of the sun. The days are coming back. So we're looking ahead now. We've given thanks for where we came from. We're, uh, we're acknowledging where we came from. We give thanks for what we have right here with us. And now we start to look ahead. Yeah. Um, from these dark times, these darker days, I'm talking like literally, it's dark outside. The sun come up late, go down early, not like dark times. Yeah, we look ahead. Yeah, and now what's our what's our goal setting? What's our intentions ahead? Where do we want to transition into? So, during this time, this is all part of the consciousness of the, and the ceremonies and the celebration that is makahiki um, of recognition and in preparation. So, in that you know, like the parallels of the of the the Christian. Or, or not even sorry uh, the celebration of Christmas time it was a time of giving the presents you know making an offering yeah, to to see to support into the future yeah you, we uh, the origin of a Christmas tree goes back to Norse traditions in which it's like the only living thing in that environment it's all snow and cold but you get the evergreen right there and it's that's the kuahu that's the altar to set the intentions that life is going to come back to the land Okay, very similar here. So this is the time now that we begin to plan. We 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 collect in the thanks, uh, in the recognition of where we came from, yeah, and what we've accumulated. We assess right now the giving thanks of the assessment of what we have acquired, and now the preparations to look ahead because we're going to about to start the cycle again. We're going to go back into that. The sun's going to return. Time to come back and 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 come back into our our functionality, our work um, that needs to happen. For the next generation, for the next cycles, so yeah, you know, in, in many ways we find you know it's important for us as in our families, you know, as a Ohana that you know setting a good rotational cycle for us with these kind of I don't want to say expectations, but these kind of um, oh, what's another word for that kind of like goal setting, yeah, you know, so it's important for Ohana to reflect on these things, to to always recognize um, that we are part of a of a of a continuous story. No, I, I think a very healthy thing that you see in other cultures when it comes around like Halloween or something like that. Uh, for many other places of the world, it's not such this candy and monster thing. It's it is a time of recognition. You know, um, you know, it was a time to go and 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 sit with the ancestors. You know, some cultures like uh, and places they will go to the cemeteries, and there's not a ghostly, googly scariness to it. You're literally going to go visit your kupuna. And then you bring one generation, the next generation, to teach them who they, who these people are. There's not a fear of who these people. It's not the ghost or whatever. It's that's your kupuna. Yeah, sit down. Let's share these stories. Okay, and then then we reflect on who we are right here and now, and and we celebrate the life that we are given. We we do have our pahinas. We have our games, our tournaments, and stuff. We mahalo this environment that we're in. Um, and but we also take notice. We take recognition, and that's why in setting the goals ahead, we recognize, like in a game. Okay, in the sports, I. I lost, I lost. So I can either just be, oh my God, I'm, I suck, I'm horrible. Or you look at it, it, it's an assessment. Okay, I didn't make it this time. I lost my I lost my race. Hmm, so what's my preparations? What can I do to make my, to, to, to get better at this? Okay, or and, and make an assessment. What maybe, maybe I didn't do something right. Maybe I just gotta do something more. So it's about goal setting and, and intention setting into the next the next realm on a very practical level. And so the ceremonies and stuff that we would recognize in Makaki time. Again, the ceremony is the tool, is the is the is the is the the time designated for conscious planning, conscious recognition, and the gathering of offerings and calling the incantations and chants to commune with the elements or to the Ahua is a process that helps keep us timing or, or timed correctly with our environments, um, with our with keeping our community, our families 
all united in, in moving together as we continue to progress, we continue to follow more. So um, I think I'll speak to the ceremony that, um, that I conduct uh, here. So in, in my growing up, you know, I was able to participate in a number of different ceremonies uh, for Makahiki. Um, a lot of that was held uh, as part of Kano Aina. You know, our school, we practiced it. Um, and I would say, you know, it's interesting. Kano Aina, though it is a Hawaiian cultural-based, excuse me, um, public school, it's not limited to only Kanaka Maori. So we have also, um, there was also children, or my friends and stuff too, who are not Koko Hawaii. Um, and some even transplants, like just recent came. There's no discrimination amongst that. You in Hawaii, you're part of this environment now. So you better learn how to be here, right? <laughs> it's kind of a thing. I think there is a, we, we are coming out of a time where we are seeing a transition in generations that were absolutely abused for one, either practicing or being in, indigenous, being Kanaka Maoli, being abused and or treated badly for that and or never being allowed to be in the first place um, and now trying in this sense of recovery and restoration so there's there is a there is a very there's a sore spot there's a very legitimate sore spot and there's also a fear and it's a very legitimized fear of exploitation um, which we see happen all over the world you know there's you know and, and the exploiting of our of our environment has already happened you know we I think um, the need to the need and the uh, the common practice of protecting is our cultural practices because it's ref we also see the exploitation as being reflected in our in our in our environment around us. You know the the, con the continued um, colonization and literally land theft um, that we're that we're witnessing all and the destruction of our natural resources as it's reflected in, in our environment is that happening to us now even as a people um, and and as a culture. Um, there are people who may not be of Hawaii ancestry that have been here either could have been here for generations themselves um, and or recently coming, but they do completely respect and 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 attune themselves to the place. And that's either sometimes some blessed they come already like that, or some they're willing to learn and, and, and take that on. I mean, I see that the parallels are in so many ways. You know, every single plant and animal that we have in Hawaii all came from some place. And it took generations for them to evolve to become part of this place and or to find their place in this ecosystem. Kanaka Maoli are the human is the human species that arrived here and over hundreds and thousands of years we adapted and uh, we evolved and uh, and uh, became an intrinsic part of this ecosystem. I stand by that concept that when the, the, the definition of what it is to be native or indigenous is that we are an intrinsic part of an indigenous ecosystem. We lived just like it's important for the EEV bird to do its pollinating and da 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 da, da how, our, how, how we Kanaka Maoli lived as Kanaka Maoli, we didn't only think we were an intrinsic part, we actually helped, we were part of the ecosystem. When you remove the EEV bird or something that's removed from the environment, it, it environment suffers from that. Okay, and it's going to take a long time for it to recalibrate. The pollinization's not happening. Whatever's when the Kanaka Maoli were removed or have been removed in such places, that's why we see the environment collapsing in places. You know, um, and so, but with that, there is an opportunity even for a new introduction to I don't want to say assimilate, but kind of. You know, but into an environmental state, understanding this thing. And so engaging with the culture of a place, um, for me, I and as I teach for anyone, but even for non-Kanaka, to want to learn the culture, it's absolutely necessary. I think anyone who comes here, you need to learn the culture. You need to participate because this is the prescription that was figured out over the course of hundreds and thousands of years on how to be able to achieve symbiosis and be a positive um addition or a part of this Hawaii ecosystem yeah um, and it's because when we don't have that and now we even have native Hawaiians Kanaka Maori who don't live Kanaka Maori and now we're actually a drain and and not contributing and actually taking from our Hawaii because it's our life it, it, our lifestyles your identity and your blood quantum is not an excuse to automatically give you that 
if you're not actually participating in what it is to be kanaka. If we're, you know, so in that way, in that understanding, someone can also be here from someplace else, but if they learn and they and, and they apply themselves correctly, and they become a, a symbiotic component to this environment, my kai, yeah. Um, and I'm, you know, politically, some people might not like that, but that's for me. That's what it, that's where it is. I mean, our kupuna weren't as block off like that as we are today. You know, we saw things that was my kai. Hey, we had Yeah, we love that ni oi chili pepper. Yeah, it's not. Is it Hawaii? No, it's not. But it completely is now. We love the ukulele. Was it Hawaii? No, it wasn't. It sure is now. Yeah, there's a ways that we can bring things in. Uh, and incorporate in as long and, and we try to be sure that it um, that it, it comes in in a good way that's our kuleana so in that sense it is important and I say to avoid you know the hardship of where cultural appropriation is coming in is also we're also seeing and and we are regurgitating and also witnessing other people who are fighting to protect their cultures in other places and we're learning from that and also sometimes we're just taking on the nuances and the fear that maybe doesn't exa exactly exist the same and or you can have it worse because we also have the very real so i think there, there's it's a two-way street here where people not of hawaii need to recognize why we have our protections because you know see how much culture is exploited um, i think if you want to learn about a culture uh, and how to you know participate in a cultural practices and with within a culture of a people you also have to recognize what is unhealthy um, and what's not pono. so coming and taking little bits of something and then going off and selling it, making a, you know, making your own little YouTube videos or, or your own business out there using Hawaiian things with no con no real depth of connection and or reciprocation back to is Pono Ole. Yeah. Um, but especially if you are here in Hawaii, it's important to participate um, to really avoid cultural appropriation. You know, there's an importance of be being sure to step in as a good student. Find a good kumo, find a good teacher who can share and, and, and for one to really participate, one has to put themselves in it, you know, and, and really go through the whole learning. It's no different from, you know, you can't just go to college or go to take some class for what, you know, the course is five months, but you only go for two weeks. You can't walk out and say, oh, look, I'm, I'm, I'm proficient in this. No, you're not. So same thing, you have to really participate and really engage and really be a very good student. You know, and because that's what we have to do as Kanaka too. I, I'm, a, I'm very stringent that no kanaka, you cannot just walk around and just make I am, I can do this because I am Hawaiian. It's like, did you learn it, bro? Have you actually exercised it and practiced it and learned it too? We have, same thing for us, the expectations that we hold on us, we definitely will hold to anybody else. Um, and then a little bit more because you, it's a lot more learning. You don't, I do recognize innate wisdom as well too. It's in our koko. So for me, that also means that we have a greater responsibility. Um, and we're much more accountable to these things but we also have to be the example of um so i have zero um issue with non-kanaka participation um but participate humbly as we as i would expect from anybody else um and it is not if it's not your culture if it's not in in your ancestry it's definitely not for one to then assume the uh, the right to lead it you know, it has to you know it comes from the people yeah? um, so um but so as one example as a way of where things can be shared amongst peoples of different ethnic backgrounds different indigenous people so i've had my years of, of hawaii ser of kanaka ceremony or makahiki ceremonies led by my kumus um, and i still continue to participate in today um, but in 2013 i created a new ceremony um, and dedicating it and dedicated it to the makahiki um, and this ha includes a component that is not that isn't was not a Hawaiian practice necessarily um, and that has to do with uh, ceremonial running and so I was blessed as a, as a young man to be able to participate in the ceremonies with some indigenous tribes on the continental US of the Mokokonu. Um, a couple of these ceremonial run, uh, runs, one is uh, the Peace and Dignity Run, which is a huge intertribal ceremony. You know, many different tribes, tribal nations from both North America and South America, they run. One group starts from Argentina 
and runs all the way up through all of South America. And the North American groups start in Alaska and they run all the way down. And for about three or four months, they run and traverse through all these different communities. And people come in and out of this run. And I was blessed to participate in that too and felt the power that there is in this, in this physical sacrifice with a strong intention. Um, and then blessed to participate in the ancestral run with the Pitt River Nation in Northern California. And I've been able to participate with that run for a number of years. Um, and building this relationship, it was always recognized the Kanakas that come from Hawaii and run with us. You know, and after a number of years, I, was, I felt compelled to want to share this story, to share this, as they refer to it, share this medicine uh, with my people. And that was because even after, from 2004, my first time participating in the ceremony, all these years, I, f I finally heard some of the old timers talking about, you remember when we started this? Yeah, that was, you know, that was some time, yeah, we didn't know what we were doing. And I was like, oh, wait a minute, what? I thought we were doing an ancient ceremony that their people have always done. And they have this mo'olelo that, you know, the, the race between the mountain lion and the bear from between this area, uh, the same trek that we're running. And so I thought it went from way back then and I was, shocked to hear like no they only started it about 20 years ago and they were sharing how the elders said recognize the real the, the strife in their communities a lot of alcohol abuse drug abuse you know domestic violence poverty all these things that was affecting their community and there was the elders who said we need a prayer we need a ceremony i mean there was no existing ceremony to deal with these issues necessarily and not to mention um you know to really look at the history of what happened to native uh, northern california tribes devastating what, what happened to their peoples. So still holding on to what they have of their culture as a living people, invoking a new ceremony to address new issues or issues that they're facing. Um, and then pulling on their mo'olelo, pulling on their ancestral stories to, to not just bring mana, but in a way legitimize this, to, to plan their route to run from sacred mountain to sacred mountain. And the ceremonies, pull, let's do this ceremony, let's do one of these ceremonies with throughout this process. Carry the prayer. And it started off with like hearing the stories of like, there was like four uncles, they were young, young guys back then, like going down and they were just told, make their fire, give your prayer, carry the prayer. And they were like figuring out. And just hearing this, I was like, huh, wow. So you guys didn't do all this research and have to um, justify or prove that it's a traditional practice and, no, it's just real native people pulling on aspects of their culture and creating a real ceremony to address real issues. And that's why I was like, hmm. You know, and I know what this run has done for me personally. And I felt that 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 prayer and how so I asked at the sacred fires if I could share this with my people. And I was given that that permission. And when I came home, I shared this with a lot of my elders and a lot of my kumus. And you know their guidance too. I'm like, oh, that's that's good, but you know, we don't want to. We're not trying to take it them. We're not trying to be them. We're not. Good. We don't try to be Native American now. Yeah. But there was a respect to respecting and acknowledging the origin. But here in Hawaii, you know, how do we how do we make this sacred? And we're not just gonna do what they do. So I was led through this very in-depth process, and just and not really led. Just like when I came, but oh, I want to do this. They're like. Why? Who? Ooh. And it's, I had to create this whole thing. And in this process, functionality, what is it's, what's our purpose? What's our intention? From who are you connecting to? What are you trying to tap into? And so through this process, I was drawn because my prayer was, well, I wanted to do something that united the people for prayer of consciousness for our health and the health of our environment. Okay, what do we have in our ancestors? What do we have in our culture that you, we can pull on from that? How do we restore the body? Where do we where do we acknowledge the strength in our bodies and such? How, prayer for the land, for what? Just like world peace, you know, just to kind of, through what process, through what means? Okay, health of the land, we want to see it restored. You know, where where's the time of restoration? Oh, Makahiki, and that began with practical. When are you going to do the run? Oh, okay, so if I want to invoke on images of restoration and, and seeing the land renewed and rejuvenated, well, that, I should do it at this time of year. Oh, what do we what do we have? That's Makahiki. Who's the Akua? The Asurono, the restorer, the reviver, the rejuvenation. Oh, so it's just in rooted in the continuity of our existing culture, a brand new element being here and uh, and connecting with the space as a new as a living people, we are absolutely capable of creating the ceremony as we need it. And so in this day and age, 
for me it was also how do I engage community because sometimes in our a lot of our other ceremonies there's you know there's very strict couples there's very strict requirements um, and sometimes that more excludes people or separate people who aren't able to attend all the workshops to learn all the chants and prepare all the things yeah? so a lot of people don't get involved because they cannot do that or they're not allowed to do that you know there's different kind of reasons why and therefore it is for we're blessed that we have people who can do that and who have the time and they can keep those things going in no way was this ceremony designed to replace anything i've got some criticism for that people are like you know trying to change it the market i'm not changing nothing it's a new addition <laughs> um and so but the context of this being who can participate anyone yeah if you have the ability to grab our prayer staff and pass it you're in if you can run you're in if you can walk you're in yeah. if you can't even show up but you can make some food you're in yeah. if you honk and acknowledge and see us and see like whoa we're there you're in yeah. no it's there is a, a synergy that that comes across during the ceremony that just it opens the doors for community for, for discussion and opens the ability for anyone to step in so really we've had many many people and it's a big thing every year members a lot of people um from the pit river nation and neighbor neighboring bands they come to hawaii to support us um and this ceremony has inspired some of my students from japan and they went back home to japan and we're all inspired and they created a ceremonial run up there and now we have this unity between mount yaku or mount shasta mount Kea, mount fuji this this thread of ceremonial runners who run and support each other and learn about our communities um, and here in hawaii during this time it's become a synergy thing everybody kind of looks forward to this the movement of just seeing the prayer staffs and we've had aunties or people just like they see the staff they pull over their car just to get out and wave or give a prayer as the runners come by Hey, and we hand it to them. Let them collect it, hold that prayer staff for a moment, because it is a receive some of this and give some for this. So it's a beautiful thing, and it's a it's a contemporary ceremony. And so my thing too is, if you are breathing, if you're in this place, you're responsible. So how can we help you be a better contributor? Yeah. And how can we help each other? To be better contributors to each other and to our aina so therefore we can receive as well so um yeah it's a real life it's a living thing it's a living culture as well so that that's also my thing we are not museum pieces we're not dead and gone and the only thing that's hawaiian is if it's recorded prior to 18 whatever whatever it has to be proven and documented by i don't know whatever out of foreign archaeologists or whatever it's like i'm on they were like is that hawaiian it's like i'm hawaiian bro so in this day and age, this is what we do. Um, and we still maintain a lot of ways. We still have the other ceremonies happening too. And we're, I am very mahalo for many of the leaders and kumus um, in that preside over these and maintain these other kuapola ceremonies, the heiau and other things too. We're all linking up, you know, and they are, they recognize what we're doing. We, uh, and they feel the mana of that because we're, we have the groups, you know, who have to do the, the stronger disciplines and dedications uh, or dedicate stronger to uphold these traditional ceremonies. You know, it is kind of hard when our com the rest of our community doesn't have the ability to participate. So they're recognizing that this is something that helps. It's a little bit more noah. It's a little bit more free so that we can also just bring more people into the consciousness of this. Um, and it does we bring us back. It has great um, things that we observe during this ceremony. One is we, as much as possible, try not to contradict our prayer. So it's not like strict couple, but we encourage like, okay, we're running for the health, you know, praying for health for our bodies, our community, our families, and for the aina. So mm, maybe during this time when you're on the run, let's not be smoking. That's how you say, oh, please grant me health. <laughs> yeah. So we try, just challenge yourself, you know, no drinking. Um, let's eat aipono. Yeah, aipono, let's take care of our bodies, you know. Can I be sucking down the soda while you're praying for, for, for health? And or how do you give thanks for the aina and what the land provided when we just went to Costco? You know, it's we there's things that we've done uh, that we put around the ceremony. So we in all the feasting and stuff, and we recognize the different districts. We encourage everybody. Um, we we come together to eat and the food on the run. It's like the challenge is it has to come from Hawaii. It has to be grown here. It has to be hunted or gathered from here, prepared here. And it's not like I mean it's not like 
you're going to be condemned if you bring something else. It's, no, it's just it's a challenge because then we start to reflect. You have the communication. Oh, it's actually hard to get some, you know, to find something from here. Whoa, there's a good sign of what something we got to work on, huh? And it was also a beautiful time where, you know, again, Rana Sudo, you know, they don't want ceremonies and stuff. They cannot come, but hey, they even go hunt. I brought that. They brought Kalua right on. That's how they participate. Yeah, we've had people who are the farmers who come. They bring their stuff, and and we are getting to really eat from the aina and give the thanks to those hands. The recognizing of the resources provided uh, to us and sustain and the people who actually work and sustain these things, and then we recognize where the pukas are. Yeah, we're like, wow, we get hard time get some food for you know for twenty people from the land made locally, made um, prepared, healthy. This is it, it's a reflection too. That's that reflective part, and so in that, hmm, where are we gonna go? How do we fix this for next year? I think just uh, I, I'm inquisitive a little bit of is there a way because one of the things we've done during our, our run is we do recognize community groups efforts or things that are happening uh, sacred sites and such too um, and a way to encourage maybe even some of these hubs uh, as a way like to both be fed by this and if they want to participate in this um, it's a neat thing of, of how we maybe we can uh, bring mana to that because I love it yeah, yeah. how do we connect up uh, email, <laughs> but I mean, yes, we just we have conversations. I think next week I'm, I was going to plan. Um, uh, normally every year, I uh, before we do the run, I kind of host like a community talk story about it. Just kind of give answer questions and stuff, and see how everybody can participate. Um, kind of explain how it all rolls and everything too. And I offer some basic classes for protocol, so people can learn the chants if they want to, or even some of the dances that happen at the different stopping points and stuff too. Um, yeah, so I can. I'll be sure to send you that link. I gotta get that um, set up over here. Uh, yeah. So there's different ways. You know, some people have. Um, we have different stopping points that we have done in the past. That's kind of like our, our main stops. Um, other times, sometimes like the, the the staff, the pair runners will just come run through a space mm -hmm. if it's if it's not too far off of our path and such. Mm -hmm. But um, we have particular gathering points. The the mid the, the morning there's a there's a set time for a morning ceremony before the run runners take off. There's always the lunch, like the, the lunch ceremony, wherever that ends up, at whatever time we end up getting getting there. And then there's always the ending point of each day. So it's four days of running, and we have two days prior. Uh, the ceremony actually begins on the summit of Mount, uh, actually the, the halfway up the mountain, and that's where we actually at that sunrise we put we take the our kukii, the kukia imauna kii right now is uh, is closed, wrapped, and then we open up the lono. And we do that as a sunrise ceremony. And then a contingent will go up the mauna and we do prayers at the summit and then we consecrate the prayer staff at Lake Wayahu. The ceremony is there and then we come back down at lunch and then we try to get to Pu'ukoli, which is the very center center of Hawaii Island. It's way out there like Apuahakuloa. And there's a huge altar out there too and that's this, like literally the, the geographical center of Hawaii. Mm. And so technically it begins with the highest point of Hawaii, the central point of Hawaii. Um, and then that evening and the next day, we encourage you put out there for people, go heat uvai, go do a cleansing. So some art a lot of times we'll go down to the kai at sunset and we'll do our kapu kai or whatever we need. And then the, the day before, the next day is kind of, we just prepare, anybody preparing. We have our big community feast, um, kind of opening ceremony here in Honokaha. And again, all of this is open to anybody to come um, at any one of these stages. So that's why there's so much different things that happen that people can come to there's already a core group of us, so maybe between 20 or 20 or 30 of us that actually like we're in the whole thing. But it really is it's fluid. People come in and out, participate in this, and but they're they're tapped in. Um, for COVID, but I tend to try and host at least one workshop in each district that people can actually come to, you know, face to face and learn. And we just kind of share this stuff and we practice a chant or something just to share it and get so community can participate in whatever level they can. Yeah, and it's so it's a super open invitation. But in that in that sense, this is the way to like how so it just becomes like a normal thing. Everybody every year, everybody knows. Hey, it's Makahiki. The runners are coming, and it's just that kind of something that happens that helps to just bring an overall conscious. I'm trying to like work it out like, like the first year we did it, like Fuan Kaya and all them. They did it on the radio. They like they like for the four days. They're like the runners are coming through here today, and so try to help normalize that because at least just this simple ritual, if it it's it just more people seeing it. Even at how many people I've known who like, yeah, it was like, hey, we saw these people running down, they have one key in their hand. And it just opens up the conversations. And then 
boom, you know, what is that? What is that about? Oh, that, 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 that. So it has that component too. So we say Lono is also the god of sound and the mess and the messaging. So we play that role too as the Kukini Pule. So. <laughs>